Complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to... 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed to- Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to gold my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. McFly? Biff? Kid? Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Brown Resident? Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse.
Watch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, um, uh, Sonny Crockett. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H two A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A, right? Now, what am I missing here? Or do we take H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to A's expectation value, but only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that even possible? Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. But how many Newtons are required to maintain a constant mass if acceleration is reduced by the inverse of the derivative of the speed relative to the speed of light? So, let's back to H. Gail, Zemeckis, and Fine. Attorneys at law. <laughs> No solicitors. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Crockett, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Or do we... Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. But go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong! Now, if H stands for one, the one-dimensional harmonic cost... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you, and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I... Good grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, 
But what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Stand for one. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett! Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Ah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <gasps> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen! Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Crockett. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit! Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. What's the scoop? 
I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls, or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. Hey, I can help you deliver soup. I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh, which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But, if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? You can meet in the park. No, that's no good. Too many of the members sleep in the park. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? Brown residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please tell your friend Emmett we accept. The meeting isn't due to start for a little while, so that'll give our people some time to set up. As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh? Who? The Insane Asylum. Whose inmates are crazy for soup. All right, Edna, just think of all those poor unfortunates and hold your nose. Mr. Donnelly! Subpoenas for Arthur McFly? Have you seen him? For a few seconds in the soup kitchen, but I think he's gone back into hiding. Brilliant deduction, Einstein. <laughs> what do you know about Arthur McFly? Certified accountant. Graduated Hill Valley five classes ahead of me. Seems like a nice fellow, actually. How did he get mixed up with a guy like Kid Tannen? Who knows? Sometimes people find themselves stuck in situations they can't get out of. This might be a stupid question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? 
What does law have to do with science? Science has its own laws. You of all people should know that. But couldn't you tweak your engine design a little so it runs on something else? Like what? I don't know. Gas, maybe? Gasoline? Pfft. Yesterday's news. You'll see. By 1940, automobiles will all run on pure alcohol. How about Kid Tannen? What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep, that's a Tannen, all right. We'll get that subpoena delivered, for my name isn't... Sonny Crockett! Yeah! A cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right, just try the soup. Well? Ah, uh, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Excuse me. You talking to me? Could I have a bowl of soup? We're a soup kitchen. What do you think? What kind of soup is this? It tastes like... Scrolle Ribolita? I was gonna say weak old cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look, all I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... Giving the soup a little heat, maybe? Why, is it getting cold? No, I, I mean, like chili powder. Muy caliente. Oh, bit of a tough guy, huh? Actually, I like it spicy, too. But it's gotta be edible for the common folks. <laughs> Come on, a little dash isn't gonna kill anyone. Aw, oh, heck. You got moxie, kid. Let's spice it up a bit, shall we? The kitchen's for management only, rummy. Whoa!
Those who once ate delicacies are destitute in the street. Cheery. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. Emmett, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no, of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, it's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. Okay, I've got some more ideas about your soup. Do tell. Let's see. Have you tried... Paprika? Paprika? Uh, I, I just think it could use a little uh, color. Color? Hmm. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. What are those tables for? We keep a few extra tables around for our end-of-the-month hobo soirees. Could you move them out of the way? Not a chance. I could throw out my back. What about those barrels? What about them? What kind of soup is that? It's not so... Uh, uh, it's special soup. What's special about it? It's, uh... It's made for grown-ups, kid. A soup for grown-ups? That's right, kid. Be nosy. See where it gets you. Eureka! Emmett. Yes? All right, I think I figured out which barrels have the hooch. Then what are you waiting for? He's not just going to give me a barrel. Of course. Well, you seem to have a way with people, so I'll leave it up to you to trick that lummox into giving up his moonshine. Oh. That's... interesting. Just a little mechanical ingenuity. 
In the end, the door is open. Yeah, good job. Obviously, this kitchen isn't the speakeasy. Indeed. This must be some sort of front meant to cleverly and legally obfuscate the existence of a hidden establishment of ill repute. Perhaps in the basement. Right. That might explain the elevator. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. Pretty neat, Doc. Uh, <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm still not getting through here. But at least those tables are propped up now. Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of uh, culinary enhancements back there. It's kind of blocked off there, isn't it? Yeah, but what can you do? Um. <clears throat> what is it, kid? So this place used to be a soup kitchen. What do you mean used to be? <clears throat> Despite recent changes in ownership, this joint is still available for the purposes of distributing food to the needy and the not so well to do, and no other purposes whatsoever. Right. I still think the soup needs more flavor. Ah, Miss Strickland. Come for some more soup? Come now, Mr. Donnelly. You know I wouldn't set one foot in this mockery of all that is good and decent if the poor of Hill Valley weren't so dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Was that a yes? Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. I'll tell the boss you said hello. I'll just bet you will. And they picked up the barrel of hooch. Now all I have to do is to get it from her somehow. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Crockett. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is due to begin very soon. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The Stay Sober Society. That's right! They'll soon be gathering at the Brown Estate, and we haven't provided refreshments. I can't get over the generosity of your friend Emmett, volunteering his father's house for our meeting. Huh? Oh, wait there!
Sonny! What in the name of Thomas Alva Edison do you think you're doing? Don't you get it? You need alcohol to run your drill, right? Those bootleggers at the soup kitchen won't let us get our hands on any of their hooch. But we can get Miss Strickland to pick it up for us and deliver it right to your door. No! Out of the question! Why? I can't just let strangers invade my parents' house. What do we know about these people? They're a bunch of really great guys. We don't know that. They're really polite. We don't know that. They're sober. It says so right in the name. Well, okay, but a pop needs his peace and quiet at the end of the day. This meeting is sure to be too noisy for him. So get your dad a pair of earplugs. I can't tell my father to wear earplugs! What's wrong with a little noise? It'll be like a party. My pop is not the partying type. They'll be quiet. You'll be quiet, right? Oh, yes! I play my tambourine very softly. You hear that? Yes, but... But what? But it's still impossible! I promise, Miss Strickland. It means so much to her. The answer is still no. But think of the Stay Sober Society. What'll happen to them? They can all fall off the wagon for all I care. Okay, forget the whole thing. We don't have to test your rocket power drill tonight. We don't? No, I'll take the train back to Washington and I'll tell the folks at the office to give the patent to Dr. McCoy. Wait! You will instruct the members of the society to wipe their feet before they come inside. Then you are, Emmett Brown. I thought as much. You have such a righteous face. Edna Strickland, I don't know how to thank you for your generosity. Oh, um, uh, pleased to meet you. The feeling is mutual. I've got a bad feeling about this. Now you worry too much, Emmett. Now all we gotta do is serve that subpoena, and we're off to build your rocket drill. And get my patent. Yeah, your, uh, patent. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Well, where's the office? I forget. So when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? when I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. Didn't I see you at the jailhouse, John, with that Carl Sagan rat? Um, I hope you weren't planning on trying to spring him, because I got other plans. Keep an eye on Trixie. That broad's going all squarely on me. You got it, kid. Well, you're gonna stand there like an oaky, or you're gonna shine my shoes. A 
about that Carl Sagan guy? I'm sure he wasn't the one who burned down your speaky uh, social club. You're touching a sensitive nerve, shoeshine boy. A little more rubbing, a little less talking. Isn't a soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got a heart as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little harder. I want to see myself in the toes. So, one more thing about that hat. You're testing my patience, boy. I sure could go for some peanuts. Lucky for you, I'm in a giving mood. On second thought, I'm not hungry. Then quit wasting my time. Shine! How's that? Shiny enough? Yeah, that'll do. No screw-ups tonight, you get me? I don't want this thing turning into another Shingle Springs fiasco. It's all under control, boss. Well? About Arthur McFly. Yeah? So when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the office? I forget. So one more thing about that hat. You're testing my patience, boy. Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? Could you keep your mind on your work, huh, shoeshine boy? I'm hanging on to my peanut ball. I sure could go for some peanuts. Lucky for you, I'm in a giving mood. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? Oh. <clears throat> Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Hey! Al! Fix me up! Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out!
Hey, honey, come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy, can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Where is he going? Only one way to find out. Deja vu. Yeah? Who is it? It's McFly! Shh, I know! I'll give it back to him after I give him the subpoena. I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. This hat belongs to my grandfather. What do you think you're doing? I'm throwing the subpoena. You can't do that. You have to hand it to him. Someone's playing tricks on me. What now? Bugging me, or I'll tell kid. I hope Doc Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. Emmett. Yes? We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating.
You have to deliver a lot of subpoenas. Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. We'll get that subpoena delivered. You gonna buy anything? Um, no. Then get out, Bob. Well, well, look who's back. They say rats always return to the scene of the sinking ship. Uh, get him, Matches. down from there, you son of a bitch! Right now! That's an order! I don't think they're in a talkative mood right now. Don't make me angry, schmucko! Get down here and... Face the music! You I can't get away that easy. Mood Nobody right now. puts one over on Kid Tannen and lives to tell about it. You're dead meat, twerp! Einstein, help! Yeah. Lay off! Get away get from me, you crazy go, mutt. Go, go away, dog. We're busy here. Go on, scram! Hey! Where'd he go? You let him get away, idiot! Wow, looks like they used a real shark. I don't need to go in there anymore. How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. I wonder who really burned down the speakeasy.
Need any help? Um, never mind. Thanks for bringing us here, boy. We'll take it from here. What now? I'll give it back to him after I give him the subpoena. I have to hand the subpoena to Arthur, not throw it. Quit bugging me, or I'll tell Kid! Maybe not. Not sure what that... Not sure what that... I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. What now? Hey, Arthur, can you come down a minute? Do I know you? We've got something for you. It's a sub uh, subscription to the Accountant Weekly. He won't come out if he knows why we're really here. No, oh, right. <laughs> I'm not interested. And besides, the boss won't let me leave the room. Sorry, some other time. What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? We've got some important information for you, but we can't yell it. It's private. Then put it in a postcard and send it. I'm stuck up here till the boss tells me I can leave. Sorry. Some other time. What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? I'm your grand... uh... mother's... great... nephew. You mean my second cousin? Yeah! Glad to know you, but I can't leave this building till the boss says so. He's given strict orders. Sorry. Some other time. What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? We represent the law. You don't want to go against the law, do you? No, but I don't want to go against Kid Tannen either. And he ordered me to stay put till he gives the word. Sorry. Some other time. Need any help? Um, never mind. What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? 
we've got something for you. It's a sub uh, subscription to the Accountant Weekly.